Wow, congratulations to Lindsay Ellis for getting on the New York Times bestsellers list. You have sucked all the greatest, all the bright dicks. Congratulations. I thought I would talk a little bit about this, uh, how this process actually works, because I think a lot of people don't really understand uh, how biased these lists actually are. I have here an article from entrepreneur.com. Um, I think I posted this in the comment section. I, I can't find it here, but um, in my original video, but uh, why every bestseller list is always a lie. Simply put, every bestseller list is a lie because no bestseller list measures the best-selling books. Let me repeat that so you can grasp the gravity of what it means. No bestseller list measures the actual best-selling books. Every single bestseller list either measures a limited number of sales in a few places, or far worse, it's a curated list and a small group of people are deciding what to put on their list. And they're picking books based on what they think are important books not based on what is actually selling. This is why you can see like books that sell like 10 million copies not get on the New York Times best selling list and uh, best sellers list and also see Lindsay Ellis and somehow see Lindsay Ellis's garbage transformers uh fan ficky <laughs> sci-fi novel on there. Uh it's because of it's because of the bias. It's because she knows people there who are putting her on the list or her publisher is or doing the legwork for her to make that happen. Essentially these these lists are are fake essentially. Like they're essentially just a marketing tool for these for these uh for specific creators to sort of put themselves out there. It's more of a status symbol than I, I would say than how than an actual evaluation of how well books are selling like it doesn't really mean anything it, it, it's just one of those things that sort of appeals to people like Lindsay who are desperate for some kind of validation for what they're doing with their time and energy um i, I don't think uh you know looking at her interviews or youtube videos or her comments like it, it doesn't feel like to me that she really cares about the book itself at all it feels like to me that she's more interested in like the status and the fame and this this idea that she's made it in the in society and uh, I I don't think that's the that's the way you should go I, I think you need to be more passionate about what you're creating what you're making what you're what you're dealing with um, that's probably one of the more uh, one of the reasons I kind of stopped watching her content or her re her uh, rel her video content actually it, it feels like she's not really talking about things she wants to talk about i don't know that's it's been years since i've seriously watched her content uh, in any meaningful capacity so I, I can't really remember off the top of my head but personally 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 uh i i don't think it's very good content for these kind of reasons for a lot of the same reasons that axiom's end was not a good book. I keep wanting to call it Axiom's Verge after that really terrible Metroid-like um, indie game that came out on Wii U. I just uh, hate that fucking game. But anyway, uh, so uh, is Axiom ends? Is Axiom's end good? No. Is Lindsay Ellis a good creator? No. Uh, did her book sell well? No. Uh, not to the extent in which she's trying to present it as. Certainly, it has. Very few uh, reviews on Amazon. Uh, my review bashing the book didn't get a ton of views. Um, mostly, I think at this at this point, it's mostly just a bunch of overzealous uh, fanboys and uh, and female fans uh, hoping to coast off her off of her success as a YouTuber to try and like get more views for their own channel, like their own channels, like trying desperately to uh to, to make themselves relevant rather than actually being honest and saying that yeah i don't i don't i didn't read the book i don't enjoy reading books i i don't know the first thing about reading books um i, I don't think that anybody is enjoying axioms end 
on its own merits. Like, they're enjoying it because Lindsay Ellis wrote it. Uh, you know, she's the nostalgia chick, uh, the nostalgia woman, as she likes to uh, present herself as now to prevent people from uh, pointing out her, her humble roots on channelawesome.com. And as a, as a female copy of the Nostalgia Critic, to be fair, like, Lindsay was always better than Doug. Uh, as a critic, um, I, I will always uh, adamantly uh, defend her on that point. Uh, again, I'm a fan of her classic content. Her pl- her classic uh, pre-woke content. <laughs> um, yeah, so I-, I think that's all I wanted to say about that. Uh, overall, yeah, um, I- I'm not sure where Lindsay's... Uh, career is going to go from here. Like, I I know people have been, like, throwing around this idea, like, oh, maybe Netflix would put this up. I I don't think so. I mean, I mean, I mean, getting, like, a bad book published is one thing. Like, bad books get published all the time for a variety of reasons. Like, celebrities publish books these days. Uh, All sorts of celebrities, all sorts of YouTubers have done so in the past. It's not that difficult or even expensive to get a get a book published, especially if you already have a platform, a significant following following like Lindsay does on a on a platform like YouTube, it's not all that difficult if you have status. So I don't, I'm not sure what the the Netflix scene is like. I, I don't know, I don't know how that would turn out. <laughs> Uh, I don't think she nearly has enough pool for that. I, I don't think. Uh, my estimation is that she's going to continue putting out these shitty, uh, I don't know, alien romance novels. I, I, I don't. <sighs> she, I mean, this is apparently book one. I, I don't know what she, how she's going to follow up on this. Uh, <laughs> I, I haven't thought ahead. I have no idea. What, I, I haven't really thought about it. Like, I, I have no idea what she's what she would try to do in a hypothetical sequel. But we'll we'll, we'll see if she ever does it. And uh, I'll be reviewing it here on this channel. Uh, so stay tuned for that, Lindsay. I, I'm not going anywhere. Shit. Um, so. So, uh, personally, I think that's all I had to say about that. Um, yeah, Axiom's End is not a good book. Um, and I will see you all next time.